extraterrestrials, and to all my new extraterrestrials, welcome to our weird little alien family. It's nice to see you. I am Kim, this is Dust Motes and Velocor, and this is my new filming space. I know you can't really see most of it because I've limited the frame to the, the reaches of this bookshelf, but that's just because it's, well, it's messy and kind of MacGyvered right now. And we'll see how this goes. <laughs> One day, I will not have to unpack any more boxes or bags or piles of things that don't have a place right now. Those, those are honestly the worst. Also, the, the microphone is currently jerry-rigged, so it's attached to the dresser and then propped up on the tripod, and it's very much to one side of me, so we'll see how this audio turns out. <laughs> but one day, all will be well, and I will have this all figured out, and I will have all of the equipment that I need. One day. Not today. Today, we are talking about Nixia Unleashed by Scott Rankin. Now, this is the second book in the series, so if you haven't read the first book in the series, I really recommend you go do that before you watch this video. There's a slight, slight chance of spoilers. If you don't want to read the first book, well, I don't understand that, but um, I respect your life choices, and uh, I will put my review for the first book up in the cards right here so that you can check that out and like get a little also spoiler free intro to the world, but not enough to have this, this video not be spoilery. So the first book Nixia introduces us to Elliot, a young man from Detroit who is just starting a new job. Setting out on a spaceship owned by Babel Corp called the Genesis 11, Elliot and nine other young people are competing for a spot on an eight-man dig team that will mine Nixia from the surface of a planet called Eden. Why only children, you ask? Because Eden's locals, the Adamites, are a dying species, and children bring them a rare joy. Or so they want Babel Corp to believe. Welcome to Nixia Unleashed. It's a gritty, secretive novel full of twists and turns that will keep you guessing. It's about loyalty and sacrifice and teamwork. And it's about doing the right thing, even when it is very hard to figure out what the right thing is. Now, I can't talk characters too much because some of them don't make it to book two, and some of them are only introduced at the end of book one, but I cannot make this video without talking about mourning. From Genesis 12, a tiny young Latina woman 15, maybe 16 years old, and she does not lose. On the ranking board, she easily has three times what the winner of Genesis 11 does, and nobody can really figure out how she does it. And simultaneously, through excellence and empathy, she's won the position of captain for their team. She is level-headed and creative, bold and brilliant, and she's the natural leader for their group on the ground. But within that, and without changing at all, she and Elliot build a trust and a respect that evolves into a relationship that is earth-shaking. It's not about passing glances or knowing smiles. It feels like a relationship built on bedrock. Elliot knows that if he's in trouble, Morning is already on her way. If Morning is at risk, she knows that Elliot is at her back. And together, they're going to get their family through this first of all. If you are into political sci-fi, shadowy corporations, a scrappy group of teens on a mission, you should definitely check out this book. Start with the first one. You will not understand anything that happens here if you don't read the first one. That aside, you should definitely come talk to me about books. Amiento! <laughs>